Today, I want to help you attain better looking welds that can pass x-ray or destructive testing. The first thing you need to understand in welding is what you're seeing on the outside as a finished product is not always reflective of what's actually going on on the inside. There's often hidden faults such as lack of fusion, lack of penetration, or even slag inclusion. If you don't know how to recognize faults before they start, then how do you know what your weld is going to turn out like? It's a bit of a gamble, right? Well, it doesn't have to be like that because it's not just the elite that should be able to identify faults or welds. Most people haven't been given the proper training on how to recognize these things, which leads to hours of frustration, faulty welds, and ultimately failed weld tests. We're going to look at a few different reasons why a weld fails. Reason number one, we just mentioned it, you're not reading the puddle properly. You never know how your weld is going to turn out. You've done this probably about a hundred times. You get the first couple inches in good. You're confident because you've done this a whole bunch of times before. And then somewhere along halfway, you lose it. Your arc length goes, your angle goes, and then the rest is a mystery. This sound familiar? The result, a jumbled mess. You got bubbles everywhere. Maybe your slag is super thin. It's really hard to get off. And once you do reveal it, the thing just doesn't look great at all. Now, at this point, you might think that you're welding with the wrong settings and you might be half right if you understand what settings do for a weld. Here's a better option, one that will cost you no money and that you can do in all positions. Turn down the light. No, not your lights in your garage, not your lights in your shop. If you're welding along and your plate is lit right up and you've got everything to see, that tells me that your arc length is too long. You need to tighten that arc length. You need to get closer to that plate. Go back to your basics. Look at how long that arc length should be for the electrode type that you're using. Generally speaking, we want to be between half and one time the diameter of the electrode. If you're welding with a 1 8 rod, 3 mils, well, you want to be 1 8 of an inch from that plate. This is going to tighten up that arc length. It's going to crisp up your puddle. It's going to make it shiny. It's going to make it reflective. And you're going to be able to look at the toes of the weld. By having that arc length too far away, you can't see anything. Everything's muffled. Your slag is probably mixed in there. So when I say turn the light down, it just means tighten it up. It's going to dim that arc length. It's going to dim all that stuff all the way around you. And you're just left with your peripherals, just left with the weld puddle and a little bit of your surroundings. If you can see the table, if you can see your workpiece and everything else, your arc length is way too long. Trust me. Too long of an arc length is going to cause a lack of penetration. It's going to give you a whole bunch of spatter on your plate and that slag is gonna be really hard to remove. It's gonna cause a wider and flatter looking bead. Now the opposite end of this is if you're welding with too tight of an arc length, if you're trying to bury your weld inside that puddle, well, it's gonna narrow your bead, it's gonna crown it up, you're gonna get more penetration, you might even burn through your plate. So there's a happy medium there. Arc length is super important, but there's an even more powerful reason here why we're doing this. And that brings us back to puddle recognition recognizing those characteristics of a bad puddle versus a good puddle. This is going to give you the proper bead shape and size and height and width of that fillet weld or even that groove weld. 